Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, The Growing Developer, and it feels so great to greet you all. It's been three long years since the last video came out, and well, that's a separate topic for discussion, and this, the good thing is, uh, I'm back now, and we're going to continue learning and growing together. So today's topic is freezed, and we are going into the direction of uh, code generation principles, and we're going to we're going to cover this as a part of a playlist. So without wasting any time, let's jump into today's topic. The Growing Developer. Okay, so to start, what is Freezed? Freezed is a tool that helps us to build immutable data classes along with some extended methods that are really helpful in the long run. So to start, we'll go to our pubspec.yaml file and add these dependencies. So in the dependency sections, you can see that I have freezed annotation and JSON annotation. And in the dev dependencies, I have these three important dependencies, build runner, freezed, and JSON serializable. But the important thing to note here is that freezed and JSON serializable are build tools and we don't require them in our code. Instead, we need the annotations only. And that's why you see them in the dependencies and these tools in the dev dependencies. All right, so coming back to our user example, this is a plain old user class with ID, name, email, age, roles, etc. And let's discuss the problems. Yeah, let's first see what are the problems. So, as you can see here in my void main, I have these two users user one and user two fairly simple right now these are exactly same users and if i try to equate them that is if i do a comparison between them the second print statement is just a two string method and uh, i don't think i don't believe this is going to be any helpful to us right now and this is a major major flaw in our model design what this line suggests and says is that i am actually able to update my users age directly and this behavior can cause our code to break at a lot of places without us even knowing right so let's quickly run this and see what happens so first thing first print statement says false why even though we have both the users exactly same but their memory addresses are different actually and that's why this equality operator by default actually refers to the instances memory addresses second thing is two string well instance of user this is not very helpful is it this ideally should have given me the details of the user and third the most dangerous one that i am actually able to update my user's age which was 20 before is 30 now and when and uh, when it try to print this it gives 30 okay so enough about the problems let's talk solution so now you have to follow these steps very carefully any step missing uh, can cause your model to not properly be built right so first and foremost your class should be annotated with freezed so this annotation comes from freezed annotation. This tells our build runner and freezed tool that a freezed class needs to be made for this class. Okay, next thing. We need a part directive and the part directive says where to put all the generated code. The beauty of freezed is that all the generated code will be in a separate file called user.freeze.dart. So basically the file name is generally the the actual file name dot freeze dot dot all right now this changes a bit we don't directly first declare the variables and use them in the constructor we directly create our factory constructor factory user and inside that as parameters we will define them and of course assign it to user okay right second thing 
we have to extend this class using a mixin. So we use with underscore dollar and the user, the class name. So this will be the generated class that freeze will generate and we are just mixing it with it. So now we can have ID name or sometimes this uh, code compilation is great. Age roles and I believe that is pretty much it. Now we have updated our model according to the freezed guidelines. Let's try to run the code generation. So for running the code generation, you simply go to your terminal inside your Flutter root and you run this command dart run build runner build delete conflicting outputs. I'll also paste the command in the description. So let's try running it and see what happens. So when I try running it, you can see that it created a freezed file with a lot of generated code and a lot of helper methods all right if you scroll down in inside our main you can see now this is giving error now this does not allow you to directly update any of the value which is expected which is needed and is up to industrial standards let's once again try to run this main method and when i run it voila our Comparison is actually now coming through and it gives us true. Secondly, when I try to do dot to string, it has actually overridden the uh, what what is it? The default to string method with our updated to string method, which actually gives me the complete details of the user. Super helpful, right? Now coming to the next method, which is copy with. So let's say I want to update the user. So this is the correct way to update the user, by the way. User one dot copy with. So this copy with is one of my favorite methods. What it does is it basically retains all the values of user one, all the existing values of user one, and updates only the values that you pass here. So let's say I want to update the age to 30. And I want to update maybe the name to new name. So you can pass either one value, multiple values. It's really up to you. Let's try to pick our updated user. Right. If you run it again, new name and age as 30. Well, this is great. And now you can see that with these helper methods, our work is very easy now. And it really helps in the long run, doesn't it? Let's see, what did I missed? Okay, default values. First, let's let's uh, come back and see that we have the default values. So let's say for, let's say, let's create another Boolean, which is is active, right? Now you see that this is not uh, required and this is not even nullable. So what we can do is, we don't want it nullable yeah one thing that we can do is to give it a default value like this but this is not the freezed way this is not how freezed is gonna work so what you're gonna do is for any of the value you just annotated it with default default and the default value let's say is false so what this default annotation does is that for your variable it will give you it a default value unless specified yeah mm -hmm. unless it is given any values by default it will be false similarly we can do this same exercise for let's say roles yeah for default default value for roles would be empty list right you can see the error because we need to rerun the code generation let's go to the terminal rerun the code generation and there it goes away by default we have false and empty rules value okay if you want to verify it let's say let's remove rules from here and uh, we don't have any is active value here right let's run it so our two string method will give you is active as false and rules as empty make sense all right 
okay now coming back to json serialization and deserialization for that we will have a factory method factory user dot from json okay it takes map string dynamic json and this is the syntax and we simply return user from json with the underscore and dollar now this method is what is created by our freezed all right so we read on the command the build runner command and uh, well it didn't work because for json serializable to work for this is json serialization to work we need another part directive that is user dot g dot dot now this g dot dot will hold all our json serialization and deserialization logic let's read on the command again and you can see that our dot g file has now from json and to json let's test this out blue here let me just try to print updated user dot to json now you can see that we can access to json and from json command we run it and you can see the user data in the json format all right now freeze also have some advanced topic like unions and sealed classes that we will discuss in the next part i want to keep these parts shorter so you can grasp what is needed and uh, okay okay so that would be all for today's video hope you enjoyed this video hope you learned something from this video please do subscribe to this channel and share this video with other developers and let's meet you in the next video bye bye